Presenting Barnfield Secrets and introducing Little Billy Folio. This video complements Alexander Waugh's presentation, Richard Barnfield New. In his video, he discusses this poem by Richard Barnfield, A Remembrance of Some English Poets. Live, Spencer, ever in thy fairy queen, Whose like for deep conceit was never seen. Crowned mayst thou be unto thy more renown, As king of poets with a laurel crown. And Daniel, praised for thy sweet chaste verse, Whose fame is graved on Rosamond's black hearse. Still mayst thou live, and still be honored, For that rare work, the white rose and the red. And Drayton, whose well-written tragedies and sweet epistles soar thy name to skies. Thy learned name is equal to with the rest, whose stately numbers are so well addressed. And Shakespeare thou, whose honey-flowing vein, pleasing the world, thy praises doth contain, whose Venus and whose Lucrece, sweet and chaste, thy name in fame's immortal book have placed, Live ever you, at least in fame, live ever. Well may the body die, but fame die never. In his video, Wa uh, says that Shakespeare is on the 17th line from the title, and we count the empty lines. And of course, it's true. Ever is the seventeenth word from the end of the poem. Waugh mentions that the couplet addresses Shakespeare as if he were of a higher class with you. I've discovered more clues in the poem. They are centered around the last stanza. So let's begin. For our first puzzle, quite simply, count the words from the beginning of line 12. To the name Shakespeare. What number is Shakespeare? Next, count the words from the beginning of line 16 to the second, ever. Next, count the words in the last quatrain, not in brackets. Then subtract the number of words in brackets from that sum. For puzzle number four, what is the gematria sum of the uppercase letters in line 17 of the poem? And it is an example of a panalepsis in which the same words begin and end the line, live ever. Our next puzzle. We add the gematria sum of italic uppercase letters in the quatrain. We add the number of words in the quatrain not in brackets to the gematria sum. Then we subtract the gematria sum of uppercase letters in brackets from that to get our result. For puzzle number six, we add the gematria values of the uppercase letters in the couplet. We 
We add the gematria values of the uppercase letters in the brackets to that sum. Then we subtract the values of the italic uppercase letters in the quatrain from that to get our result. For puzzle number seven, we add the gematria values for Roman uppercase letters not in brackets. Then we subtract the italic gematria values and the values in brackets from that sum. Here are the solutions. The first five are 17, six and seven are both 71. I find it interesting that thy learned name, Shakespeare, and thy name, Ever, are associated with the number 17. The fact that the name Shakespeare is also learned suggests that it is a result of reading or education. In fact, it is not the name of the actual poet. But thy name, E ver or ever is the actual name of the poet. These are more examples of the 17 enigma which I have covered in the, the 17 enigma and other videos. The question remains, how many times do we need to see these numbers before they mean something? Presenting the man identified by the number 17 and hidden by the 17 enigma. He was writing as Shakespeare. And of course he was. Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Mm -hmm.